Hi, people. Gonna drink something a little different today. Well, not that I've drank that much on camera yet, but uh, I'm gonna drink something from my own stores today. And that is 2018 Spring of Menghai from Dai, or the Menghai Tea Factory, as it used to be called. Uh, I haven't had this in a while, and I have a little window to try this tea right now since uh, the humidity's dropped because of a typhoon east of Taiwan. Uh, that brings the pressure up um, in areas around a typhoon or a hurricane. So humidity is down to um, the mid 60% range right now, which is very unusual for September in Hong Kong. Well, it's October now. Well, even for October, this early in October in Hong Kong, it's unusually low. It's still uh, potentially typhoon season here, but we've been very lucky this year. And most of the typhoons haven't come towards us. We did get one pretty powerful one, but uh, it didn't cause too much damage, fortunately. Okay, so let's see. Today I'm going to use this teapot, which I found in a back street in Hanoi um, at a tea store. I could tell it was Yixing. I didn't know if it was good or not, but like it was a known brand when I picked it up. Um, getting ahead of myself there. <laughs> but uh, I could tell that the construction of this teapot was excellent. It's very nicely crafted and uh, very evenly made, and the clay looked good. I even got to test it in the store, which was... Uh, which was very amusing for the woman working there because I wanted to put hot water in it so I could smell it. That's one way that I judge clay to tell if it's been adulterated. And this teapot passed my test with flying colors. So I bought it. It wasn't that cheap, but it wasn't that expensive either. And then when I got back to Hong Kong and uh, looked into it, I realized I'd found a, a pretty decent modern teapot that was made maybe 10 or 15 years ago by a known factory, a little factory. And yeah, I lucked out. It's a great little teapot, and I wish I'd bought the other one in the store. So, let's see. I'm actually wearing a t-shirt from the south of Vietnam right now, from Hanoi. It's a little uh, ramen monster. It's not pho, well, since pho is a rice noodle. So this is a wheat noodle. It's more like uh, ramen, uh, ramyun, as we say, in Chinese and Cantonese down here. Or yao mein, actually. It's yao mein in Cantonese, oil noodle. Okay, so first off, let's break off some tea. I'm gonna try not to burn myself here since I have some steam going. The kettle is right next to me. So I've had this cake for about four years and uh, it's entirely aged in my home. Well, it was aged in Kunming before I got it, but I use the word aged there very loosely since uh, the tea really wasn't ready to drink. That's the Napiao and you can see it's got some nice staining to it. Uh, some of the tea juices have leaked out onto the paper. And as for the cake, a little bit flaking off there. I've chipped away at this a little bit, not really. And uh, this is my personal, this is my personal stash, so I'm not going to sell this one. Got some nice darkening to it. And when it came in from Kunming, it was pretty much green, so it's aged pretty nicely. Alrighty, let's break off a bit. And I can just snap it with my fingers. I don't need to use a pick because. Uh, it's loosened up nicely in my storage. There we go. Just dust this off. And that should do it for today's session. Maybe a bit more. I don't mean the session's over. I mean, that's enough tea for today's session. Yeah. As I get closer towards the bing hole, it's harder to break it up, but uh, it tastes different too when you get closer to the, the bing hole or bang hole. So let's snap that off. And yeah, I mean, more, mainly uh, breaking off pieces from the outer rim. I tend to work from the outside in when it comes to pour, just because it's easier for me to break it off. And there you go. That's what it looks like, broken up. Okay, so. Put that there right now, and I will preheat my teapot. I did um, preheat it under the tap right now, like under the faucet in the bathroom uh, with hot water, which prevents cracking before you get boiling water into the teapot, since uh, you don't want to thermally shock your pot. I have thermally shocked a pot, and unfortunately, it was a 1960s factory one pot, which is like the worst thing I could have cracked as far as my collection goes. I don't have anything older than that. So. Let me do my pitcher rinse. 
I did just rinse this, but I, I always seem to preheat my pitcher this way. It's just a little, little habit of mine, perhaps a little OCD, but uh, this is what I do. So there we go. The pot's nice and hot, and I'm using a little uh, Dai E pitcher today. Very meta, right? Okay. But I'm left-handed, so let's swivel it around. I hope you guys can hear me okay when I uh, when I'm done with this vid because I don't have a microphone and uh, sometimes well I've noticed in the last few videos the volume isn't quite as high as it could have could have been or should have been so here's hoping that I'm easy to understand and hear today okay let's drop some tea in I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I tend to do videos on the fly. I don't really plan too much. I just I just do it, and whatever happens happens, and that's pretty much my motto for life, a lot of the time, which has pros and cons. But hey, it's, it's just the way I am, and I've been this way for a long time. Alrighty, so we'll do a nice rinse. I'm only gonna do one rinse since this tea is pretty clean. 2008 Dai Yi was nice and clean, and I've stored it for four years. Before that, it was stored in a large warehouse in Kunming, where it was kept in what we call Kunming cryo storage. Not all Kunming storage is cryo storage, but uh, this tea is definitely cryo stored. It didn't age at all. In fact, it probably went backwards in Kunming because um, it was so cool and dry in that particular warehouse that the tea actually desiccated. So, yeah, it took a while to wake this tea up. And now it's actually pretty nice. It should be anyway. The last time I had it, I enjoyed it. Okay, that's enough of a rinse. Looking good. Got some nice color to it already. And let's shake out that water, residual water. I like to leave my lid slightly tilted to let some steam out, but not too many of the aromatics. And we'll compare it silver today. I keep saying I'm going to do that, and I don't always do that. But uh, we will today. Okay. So I'll leave that water in the cups. And it smells good. It smells like wildflower and cantaloupe. And, yeah, it's pretty nice. I can smell some human storage, but not in the wet or dank sense. It's like a wild... Verging on barnyard smell, but not quite there. So quite clean. My, my home storage is, is, is very clean because um, I run air conditioning a lot. So the humidity does get into the tea for much of the year, but uh, I run air conditioning when I'm around. And that stops it from getting you know, too wet or getting moldy or any of that. So that's my little, my little thing. I run air conditioning when I need it, and my tea basically lives like I do. We live together. It's a symbiotic relationship in a sense between me and the uh, microorganisms of the poop. Okay, let's let this steep. Some Hongcha notes in the cup and smoke that I didn't detect from the teapot, but I do detect it in the cup. So let's let this steep and then let's see what we have here. What are you guys drinking today? Let me know in the comments. I love comments. I'm not used to this YouTube thing yet, but uh, it's getting easier. I'm getting more comfortable with it. Okay, I don't want to oversteep this, but I don't want to understeep it either. So let me go by feel. And I think it's about time. Let's see what we have. Oh, okay, not too dark, but it's still early in the, in the infusion. So let's pour out more and see what we have. It's too strong, I can always dilute it down with water, but I don't really like doing that. I feel like I failed with the infusion if I have to dilute it down. So I avoid doing that and I avoid overbrewing whenever possible. And you should too, if you want the best results from your tea. Okay, all done. It smells perfumey almost. Very nice. So yeah, I like to smell my lid since it traps aromatics. I do this with guy wands too. It smells sweet. It smells good. Let's leave that there. And that's the uh, liqueur. Looking good. Nice and dark and amber. 
So let's pour out the tea in the cups, the rinse rather. I'm not pouring out tea. Not yet. And some for my, my antique cup and some for my silver cup. And let's do it side by side. Let's start with my, my regular cup. So I like the shirt because it has the blue and white porcelain thing going on, which is also a thing in Vietnam, but this style of bowl is not Vietnamese as far as I know. It do do blue and white porcelain in northern Vietnam, but uh, it doesn't look quite the same as the Chinese stuff does. They use older motifs actually in Vietnam. Oh wow, surprisingly sweet aromatics. So my tea changes throughout the year as the temperature and humidity rise and fall. This is a little sweet spot right now because it's still north of 30 Celsius, over 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but the humidity has dropped down into the 60 something percent range. And it was down to the 40 percent range last week. So this is very unusual for, for October and September, September and October. Some wildflower, a little bit of bitterness, but not unpleasant at all. This teapot isn't very muting, so it's about perfect for testing something like this out. It's very high fired, so it performs a lot like Yixing Hong Ni, even though it's like Hong Pi Long, which is like uh, dragon skin, red dragon skin, or red skin dragon. <laughs> but yeah, it's a great clay, great modern clay, and it performs very well. Extremely sweet aromatic. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's almost candy-like. It's very pleasant. And very unexpected from this tea. There is that bitterness which will fade with time. Uh, this is spring material and spring plantation material from Dai Yi is often pretty potent stuff. Uh, when you process it into uh, into shu cha or shou, then you knock that bitterness down considerably. But uh, when you have a cake like this, spring in Manghai, I wouldn't want to age this anywhere but somewhere that's tropical and hot and humid because you need that to, uh, to knock that edge off and to really Take this tea to where it should be, if you ask me, because it needs the storage. Very light aged notes, like um, like dry storage. This is, I guess you could call this Hong Kong natural storage, although I do use air conditioning, which is a slight you know, diversion from pure natural storage. Very nice. A bit bitter, but not unpleasant at all. And now we'll try it in silver. Yeah, the bitterness is way more pronounced than silver. So, I wouldn't use this cup for anything bitter. Not again. Less sweet aromatics, I think. And a bit more of the age. Yeah, I'm not using the silver for this tea, because... Uh, it just makes it unpleasant. So no silver. Ooh, that was bitter. Okay. Let's do another infusion. My water's cooling off, but uh, I don't want to go all the way over there to boil. When my housekeeper's back, I can have her help me out and bring water back to me. But uh, she's probably going to talk to me on video, which is going to be distracting for me and for you if she starts goofing around. But that could be entertaining. Okay. So let's let this steep. I can still feel that bitterness from the silver, and yeah, I won't do that again. Not with anything bitter. This tea is so much more pleasant in, in porcelain. A clay cup might have been nice, but uh, I don't want to lose this, that aromatic sweetness at the top, which is really very pleasant. It's something I'm really enjoying right now. The bitterness and there's a bit of astringency too. It's very bracing. This tea is definitely waking me up, which is good. I have a lot to do today, so yeah. After this, I have to run into town and I need to pick up um, some aged uh, Liu An for someone and some Oolong and a bunch of other things, and then pack up orders as well. So busy day ahead. Yeah, not gonna run around in my little noodle monster shirt, my little ramen monster shirt though. Although that would get some great reactions. 
Maybe I should. I don't know. <laughs> I think we need some lighthearted entertainment in Hong Kong right now. It's been a horrible week. Yesterday was the worst day so far in our protest movement here. I haven't spoken about that on videos yet, but it's been very stressful here in Hong Kong for a lot of people. I'm not really stressed out by it, but for a lot of people who are involved with the protests or who have family involved in the protests or who have brick and mortar stores, this has been a really rough time. Hotels are, and tourism are really struggling. Like no one's really coming here. And this is like a major week for tourism in Hong Kong because um, a lot of tourists from the PRC come down here for uh, this week. And they aren't coming down because of the whole protest thing here. Let's not go too long because this is a second intrusion and I think it's going to be pretty potent if I let it sit too long. So yeah, we're losing out on all that revenue that we would, we would have had otherwise. <clears throat> I'm just coming over bronchitis. I had bronchitis yesterday and I guess I still have some now. But uh, I'm feeling a lot better. I couldn't really go anywhere for the last couple of days because I felt too weak and fatigued. should about do it oh yeah still very sweet and perfumey I don't get that perfume in the uh, in the cup so it's kind of like a uh, hair I'm usually I don't ever get that from Pura so I don't know why I'm getting that from this tea today it's wildflower intense with some barnyard yeah, lots of expansion there you can see it. This teapot's great because it's easy to check the leaf out and uh, it's easy to clean out too after. Okay. Yeah, and the lid traps more of the high notes. You don't get as much of a mid-range and low-end funk that you do get from the leaf itself. So that's one reason to sniff the lid. Okay, looking nice and dark. Nice and amber. About too dark. Light intensity up here is really high. I'm 37 floors up facing the water and uh, it's October. So, shit, no, sorry. <laughs> Sunlight is pretty intense here. All right, let's see what we have. Very similar to the last one. Ooh, dropped a little, uh, little water or uh, tea liqueur on the wrapper of the cake. So I'm just going to lift it up a little to let it dry out. Okay. Still sweet with that cantaloupe note. Very unusual. Not what I expected from this tea this morning. Bitter as well, but not unbearable. So I'm definitely gonna put this cake back and try it again later, like maybe in a year. I've only had a few sessions from this cake so far, maybe one or two. This may actually be the second session I've had so far. So yeah, I'm not tearing through this cake at all. I've got plenty of tea to try and plenty of tea to drink, so there's no point in me drinking something that I don't feel is quite ready yet. Like, why would I subject myself to that? When I could just, you know, put it away in my bedroom and let it do its thing for several years. Um, if you have a pumidor or whatever, or limited space, and I understand you may not want to store tea long term if you don't have the environment for it or the space for it. Uh, I definitely don't have much free space since property is so expensive here, but Puer doesn't take up too much space comparatively and it's, it's a worthwhile investment for me as far as uh, time and space very nice the lower temperature of the water may actually be helping with the bitterness some since it won't uh, draw out as much and that's true for all teas not just pure Using cooler water can help tame bitterness. Which is why some teas actually taste better in Kunming than they do anywhere else. The high altitude means water doesn't get over 92 Celsius at boiling. Uh, which really helps to tame bitterness. I wish I had my brush for my teapot, but I do not. So I can't brush my teapot right now. Oh well, I'll have to remember that for the next video. I don't like getting water staining on my teapots. Um, the water here is nice and soft, but there's a possibility of uh, 
you know, lime deposits. And while they're very mild here, I still don't want them on my teapot. And I'd rather distribute the water evenly around the surface of the pot, just so it looks better long term. Okay. Oh, still a little bit left. Oh, that's interesting. It's more floral and perfumey as it cools, but it's very sweet. Very sweet aromatics. Just a little as tiny as hint of aged dry storage there, but overall it's very sweet. So my storage is really working well for me. It's doing what I want to the tea. And I hope it doesn't take this tea too far as far as aged storage notes, because I quite like where it is now. And I'd like this tea to maintain that that character that distinctive spring character while also getting smoother and less bitter so that's the goal and uh, since this is so bitter I'm not going to put it in the bag I sometimes put tea in a bag well I often do to uh, slow down aromatic loss and yeah if your tea's in a wrapper in natural storage or dry stores or traditional storage you lose aromatics in the environment to some degree Wrapping a cake in plastic or putting it into a bag does help to slow down that aromatic loss. But uh, yeah, I'm not doing that with this cake yet because I want that bitterness to die down some. And putting it in the bag might slow down that process. So that's why I'm not doing that with this cake. Yeah, but I still, I've got my, my mouth watering from this tea. Yeah, that's astringency. It's not entirely unpleasant, the uh, bitterness and astringency in this tea, but uh, yeah, it's tolerable. Still, I don't think I want to drink this just yet. I feel it'll be a waste of tea, and uh, yeah, I'd rather hold this for more, for several more years to see where it can go, because I only have the one cake in my own storage at home, and I don't want to tear through it just yet. That stuff is bitter and bracing. I can feel my blood sugar dropping. So potent material. Dai's uh, plantation material, Tai Di material, especially the spring material, is potent stuff. Really potent. Really powerful. I don't feel the cha tea as much, interestingly. I thought I would, because this tea is known for it, and Dai is usually a heavy hitter in that department, which is, you know, they know what their customers want. They know what the the Chinese poo drinking public are into and they like powerful cha chi heavy hitters. So I'm surprised that I'm not getting that effect, but maybe I just haven't slept enough. Or I'm too busy talking to you guys to really feel it. I don't know. We'll see. If it hits me later, or if it just doesn't at all. Or it hits me in a different session down the line. I don't know. Okay, that should do it. Let's pour it out. Much lighter this time. Put it on a bit longer, but no, no, actually, it looks good. I might, might stop after this infusion because this video is getting kind of long. And I need to eat something. My sugar's crashing hard. And yeah, I get it's not pleasant when my sugar crashes. There we go. Nice and amber. So yeah, I'm drinking before breakfast, which is not advisable if you get blood sugar crashes like I do. And that's especially pronounced with shampoo or um, shou or oolong doesn't do that as bad. It does if I'm using a very high ratio with oolong. Strong tianguan uh, yin or tikun yum, as we say it out here, will really bring my sugar down. That's what the 60 to 70 percent fill in. Uh, an 80 to 100 ml pot, so powerful brewing. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting that sweet cantaloupe. Less bitterness as expected since the water's cooled off. That's one way to tame a bitter tea if you want to drink it now and you don't have the time or patience or environment or any combination of those three factors to, to really age a tea out. You could do a lot with a pumador, but uh, 
we're still in the early days as far as controlled uh, environments for cooler in a box. Um, in China, it, it is done with rooms, but usually it's done to control the environment from aging the tea. You want to prevent aging, and that's what's done in large warehouses in both Guangdong and Kunming. Um, Guangdong, and they use air conditioning a lot of time or dehumidifiers to reduce the humidity since they don't want the tea to get too dank since um, that's not what it, it's not everyone's cup of tea so to speak so yeah a lot of times when I buy stuff from Guangdong it's not where I want it and I need to hold it for months or even years to get where I want with Kunming that's almost always the case like I can't think of, a case, of too many cases where I receive tea from Kunming or buy tea in Kunming in person where it's right where I want it it does happen there is tea from Kunming that I feel is very pleasant right away especially show um, some show just ages beautifully in certain storage environments in Kunming but not others so it's the same as Mongo it depends on the storage and uh, I know I like my tea right where I like it and I my own storage is never dank I don't really get those notes because I control my storage but being around my tea, that's how I control it. I need to be comfortable when I'm around my tea. And if I'm comfortable, then my tea has to dry out a little bit since I can't handle too much heat and humidity. And that actually, that kind of rise and fall of humidity and temperature controls uh, the process of aging. And it's kind of my own thing. It's, it's J aged, basically. It's aged my way. And yeah, I like the way that turns out. So I've been doing that for several years and I'm going to continue doing it. I don't want my tea to get too dank, but I don't want it to be too dry either, since that's just unpleasant in some cases. With something like this, you definitely don't want it to be too dry. Yep, cantaloupe, some bitterness. If I were to reboil, I know I'd get more bitterness out of this, and more aromatics. <clears throat> I keep hitting stuff today. What's going on? So yeah, very pleasant. Aside from that bitterness. And astringency, which is not unbearable, but yeah, I, I might have might have been better to pick something else this morning to wake up to since uh, this is pretty bracing. Although it will get me out the door, that's for sure. This stuff will definitely get me out the door. Okay, I will continue this tea in a little bit after I eat, but I will end this video now. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Spring Among High is a great tea. I do have some at the warehouse as well, which has had a head start in uh, Guangdong. It's 2008 and it's lovely. But this cake is not for sale. This is for my own personal stash and uh, yeah, I only had the one cake, so I can't sell this really. Alrighty, take care.